Alright you guys, here we are back again with the 2004 Predator 500 here. Um, so as you guys could see, it's pretty much still where we left it. I think the only thing I did was put the fuel pump on here. But we did find some other stuff missing and um, also... Um, yeah, well we pretty much found a bunch of stuff missing. But also I got all the parts that... Um, I should need to put it back together. So this is it right now. Let's go to the bin. All the old stuff right here. Which I'm still going to be using. Minus the head. And all the new stuff. So. Battery. Um, radiator hose. I bought this at O'Reilly's. Battery was like 28 bucks. Or was it $32? I don't remember. One of those two, the hose was like 12 bucks. About the chain, that was $33. Bucks. Um, found out that the starter solenoid was uh, missing also. So that's, that's also, uh, this was like $13, bucks, $14. Bucks. Um, we got the header pipe. That was like $40. Um, and then we got this, which was pretty much the used also that I got off eBay. I got the header off eBay. I got this off eBay. Dude, it looks really bad, you guys, honestly. Um, but the only real reason was, obviously, we're going to clean it all up. The real reason is that we wanted it for the head. The head looks way better than the other one. The only thing that I saw was this, which really concerns me. But... Um, we'll see what happens. It's better than the other one. The only bad part about this, well, it's not that bad. This was broken. The guy from eBay is really cool, though. He's uh, sending me a new thermostat housing. Um, well, new thermostat housing. And um, the guy, he's going to send it to me or he's just going to refund me the money, which I really don't care. Um, I was just letting him know. I messaged him, told him, hey, man, I got my package yesterday, opened it today. And this is messed up, just so you know. Uh, I really wasn't trying to get anything out of it. Just, you know, I didn't I didn't know if he knew it was broken or nothing. It didn't look broken in the pictures. And um, he's going to send me just a couple bucks back. Which is no big deal. I'm not trying to hustle him or nothing, just so he knows, you know. Shipping's pretty crappy right now anyways. Um, but yeah, so I think I paid... This was the worst. Uh, I think I paid 165 for it. Um, but yeah, it came with uh, the thermostat housing that's broken, the cams, the cam journals, um, the valves, probably the buckets and everything. I haven't even opened it up. It has the valve cover, but no valve cover screws, which I'm pretty sure I saw those in the picture too, but oh well. Um, also, yeah, comes with the oil, the oil lines. It was kind of weird because I seen this Polaris. 500 predator head core so I'm guessing probably somebody along the way basically um, traded this in to get a new one like maybe a refurbished one or you know one that's fixed up pretty much but yeah I'm like 225 head core so if they charge 225 for the head core they probably charge at least $300 for the job or a new head no, probably way more, probably like 600 bucks for like a uh, redone up top end, you know what I mean? But that's crazy. Hmm. Or maybe they were supposed to take this off, I don't know. Um, anyways, also the last thing was the piston, the Marl piston that I used on, I think it was the Outlaw. So got that. Actually already checked the, the gap. And that's the gap. So it's tiny, you guys. So it's actually perfect. I'm going to hone it just slightly. Even though it's not roughed up or nothing. And then um, we should be good. But yeah, well, let's go ahead and um, start getting all this stuff put back together. So while we wait for the guy to pick up the golf cart, we're putting the Predator together. So I got the piston in there. Finally, it was a pain in the ass. They always are a pain in the ass. I don't know why. I even tried doing the other way where you put the piston in the cylinder and then put the wrist pin through. And that was a hassle too. It's just a pain in the ass always. Um, 
Right now I'm working on the valves on the new head and I can't get this one out. I knew that it said one of them might be stuck so but um, I have those if I really need them but those are really banged up. I know I have to use the thermostat housing um, but it should be alright you guys. I'm going to put new valve seals, um, clean everything up really good, put everything back together and then it can go on the Predator. Um, and yeah, I'm going to fix the bottom. Oh, I think I already fixed the bottom of the, the head. So I smoothed it out with some like 2000s grit sandpaper. And just uh, did the usual. I did hone out the cylinder just a little bit. It was a very tight squeeze. So I'm hoping it has really good compression. Um, but yeah, so we're here while we wait. And um, I'll get back to you guys once I got the head put on and start... Um, doing the timing and everything on the Predator. So we've been working on the Predator today you guys figured out a couple of things. So I got the new head all cleaned up. It was really rusty. One of the buckets was stuck in there. I had to heat it up and um, then to be able to break it off it was like all kind of corroded like water got in here. Uh, cleaned up this backside, smoothed out this um, another thing we found out though on the new head is that pretty much all the valves are bent which kind of worries me because then these might be all jacked up and given that I spent like $140 on this and for the head to come out bad after the valves come out bad that's going to suck really bad um, but we're going to figure it out um, but yeah quick trip or sorry quick tip for you guys how to see if your valves are you know damaged or bent or anything put it on a drill and if you see it going like this it's definitely bad just so you guys know um but i put the new valve seals on so hopefully we should be good after that um been doing a couple of things here and there i just put the chain on had to use that harbor freight chain uh breaker for the pins to push them out Got the chain on there all shorted up and uh, tightened up. It's not like super tight, but it's on there. Uh, what else did I do? I did some other stuff, you guys. So we got the cylinder on. It was a pain in the ass. Um, I think tomorrow morning I'm going to start uh, running the lines. Well, tomorrow afternoon probably I'll start running the lines for the fuel. Um, the new valves I ordered, and they're coming in on Monday. Today is Saturday night, so we'll be looking forward to that, and then we can get through pushing this whole thing on further and hopefully get this done hopefully this head is not jacked up you guys it's kind of hard to tell but I think it will be fine we are gonna see all right you guys so this uh Polaris Predator Fire Hunter has been giving me a couple headaches um I don't think I recorded putting the rest of it together but we seem to have an electrical issue you guys remember i bought a battery a starter solenoid a key um and i've diagnosed it which you guys probably saw me load up some videos on um some short clips on youtube turned out that my kill switch was messed up so that's going to be the cause of this one um that should be the last thing we need as you guys can tell everything is pretty much assembled I was trying to do an initial first start on it, which I didn't get on camera because I was just trying to see if it was actually going to turn over. And that's when we found out the issue that so pretty much I have power when I turn the key um, until uh, I actually try to hit the start button on the kill switch. And then the battery voltage goes from like 12.5, which is what it's supposed to be at to zero, literally zero. So it's like if it, there was a short. Um, so I traced around everything. I did a lot of research. I even have a wiring diagram here to try and figure everything out. Um, this might look a little bit funky on the camera, but so here's the, I had to figure out how the, the starter solenoid was supposed to wire up. Basically the highlighted stuff is what that goes to, to, uh, I was trying to figure out how that would go, um, so I can figure out the issue. So one of the causes could be a starter, um, I think it's called a, a doid, something like that. It's a little fuse for the neutral light. Um, that seemed to be fine. could also be your clutch switch, which is, uh, I believe, uh, located right here. 
next to the left side by the shifter wasn't that um, it could also be the key it has a new key so rule that out it could be um, the recidivifier um, but that was fine the only thing it has is two red wires going up to it. there is another one that goes um that has a little fuse breaker here which is this I checked that it's just this little box looking thing it's like a 20 amp fuse yeah 20 amp circuit breaker that was not the cause um, the only other thing it left me with was was the battery and the cables that was fine I even uh, made sure the ground I had to put a ground cable because um, it didn't come with one that right there is good I even grounded it down to make sure it was good last thing kill switch left handlebar kills uh, left handlebar switch assembly so it does go to the power so which is this one the one that has a red and white wire the center one and this is this was getting power so I know um, the wiring cannot be the issue because when I turned the key it was still getting 12 voltage it wasn't until I plugged this into the kill switch that was actually causing um, the bad ground or I don't know what it is but basically the kill switch was bad before when I first tried to start it it would just buzz like I had a dead battery eventually I tried so many times that um, it didn't work anymore but at first I was just getting a buzzing sound and it only lasted for a little bit and then it kind of just then it went away like I don't know if I messed up the kill switch or what when I was push start uh, pushing the start button too many times but during a lot of um, tests and stuff like that, we ended up figuring out that that was the issue. But, yeah, this thing is pretty much put together. I actually had it all, pretty much all the way put together, and then it's ready to be started. So, I ordered the part. The part's coming in tomorrow. Hopefully, tomorrow I can do a startup video on this thing. Put the kill switch on, and uh, it has oil. It has coolant. Everything is all put together literally it's just that that's stopping me so um i just got to make sure that the gas is going to be good and the carburetor is going to be good i put this air filter on since i was missing the tube but it was like 60 dollars i just want to see if it starts then maybe i'll figure out if i'm going to buy it or not but this is where we're at with the polaris you guys just a quick little video tomorrow we're going to get the part so then tomorrow i can show you guys uh hopefully fingers crossed the first start of this thing so stay tuned for that.